Welcome to Sick Baggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve and this is going to be part two of the Chrome to Black on the Whiskey Project back here. If you've just found this video, do realize that this is part two. There's got part one and we'll put the link down in the description as well. So maybe you just searched this and you just found this and you're thinking about powder coating your all your chrome stuff on your bike. There is a part one make sure that you click the link down in the description. When I got to editing this video, it was going to be a very, very long video, and uh, it was just going to be boring. 45 minutes of me putting parts back on the bike and torque specs and all that good stuff. Thanks for checking out the video. I'm going to get out of here and cut that video back in. Part two. So from here, we're going to work on the left-hand side floorboard brackets. Uh, this is pretty easy to do. There's a couple of different brackets, but this one basically bolts on right here. And the one for this side of the bike has kind of a smooth area on the bottom. The other side has a really big increased area. So you can tell the difference between this side and that side by doing that. This one just simply goes in, put the nut on the back side and we'll torque that down. This one has a little nipple on the back side that goes in the bottom hole and then your bolt goes in the top hole. So we can go ahead and get that one in, get it started. Well, that one goes there. So this front one, we can go ahead and get it snugged up. Get it turned up here where it goes. These both get torqued to 36 to 42 foot pounds. Now guys, I went ahead and installed my floorboards. Uh, follow the torque specs in your service manual for your floorboards. It depends on what floorboards you have. These are aftermarket floorboards, obviously, and uh, my torque specs are obviously gonna be different than the Harley floorboards. But your floorboard brackets are 36 to 42 foot pounds. So your bolt back in here, your bolt here that holds the front bracket on, get your board on, get everything tightened up, and then you can move on to your shift lever. So onto your shift lever, this part here is pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. You are gonna have a rubber bushing that goes on here. When you pulled your shift levers off or powder coat, just leave that on there, that's fine. And you know that this runs inside some bushings that are in here. So we're just gonna pull that up. On your shift levers, on the back side, you'll see a mark on there. You've got a mark there and a little mark right there. You wanna make sure that those are turned towards the motorcycle. So this is another one of those things that you might wanna take a picture of before you take these off. You can look and see where you had your shifters because they have these splines and these teeth on here. You can put them at a couple of different angles. I mean, you can put them all the way up like that or a little bit farther. You just wanna make sure that when you engage, you're not hitting your floorboard. So if you have the hill shifter, you wanna make sure that it's not hitting your board when you're going down. You wanna make sure it's not hitting your board when you're going down in the front. If you notice right inside the shaft right here, there's two grooves and that's where these bolts are gonna go. They're gonna lay in there just like that. So when you put the bolt through the shift lever, like I'm gonna put this on at the angle that I think that I'm gonna want it at. If I push that bolt in, you want that bolt to run right down the edge of that groove. If you catch the teeth over here or out here, you're gonna, you're gonna end up just mangling this whole thing. So make sure before you put the bolt in, you look down in there, get it lined up on that groove, and then run your bolt in. So I'm just gonna set them right now. Then we'll put some blue Loctite on them and put them on. This back one goes on like this. I believe that's probably about where I'm gonna want it. If you remove this front shift lever or your shifter arm, you wanna make sure the same thing, you put the bolt in in the back, it's a pinch bolt, and you want the shift arm up here pretty flush with the shaft, and it'll be pretty flush with the shaft up here if you have everything installed correctly. I wanna make sure that my bolt is gonna go in and go in that groove, which it is. So go ahead and put a little blue Loctite on there. And you're gonna to torque these to 18 to 22 foot pounds. Once you get everything tightened up, guys, you shouldn't have any play in this. This should not be moving back and forth. If you have everything installed correctly and you have a lot of slop in here, I have a video on that. The 2014 through 16 
this thing was made terribly and there's a fix for that uh, I have the parts numbers and all that I'll put the link to that video down in the description uh, but you need to replace this shaft right here more than likely and possibly the bushings that are inside of here all right guys so we got the floorboard mounts on. I'm gonna get the brake pedal on now uh, this is very easy to do make sure that the rubber o-ring that you see right here is on there first We've got a stem that comes out of the rear master cylinder right here with a hole in it that's going to have a pin a washer and a carter pin that goes in that little hole right there very easy to do o-ring for the outside so make sure that you have that and then you of course your washer and your nut another one of those things that we we're talking about when you pull this off to get it powder coated this has two plastic bushings in it that you have to knock out Easiest way to do that is just get a socket that fits down in that hole and knock them out. Knock them both out one way and then you just simply put them back in the same way. So this back piece on your brake lever, as you can see, it's a slot. That's where this goes right here. Very easy to do. Put it on. Roll it forward. You're going to want to go ahead and set the pin in with the carter pin towards the back and then go to the top then you have your pin your washer and your carter pin so you put the pin in with the hole facing up so you can get your carter pin in there later got that facing up you know reach in back there it's kind of hard to get to get your washer on it and then you just have your carter pin that goes in once you get that in you can just flip it over and give it a little bend Give that carter pin a little bit of a bend so now that's good make sure everything works correctly this is pushed all the way on you come down here to the base you've got your o-ring that's going to set in there it's going to set just inside there just like that washer and nut now, I wasn't too worried about blacking out this nut or the washer because really once you get your floorboard on here, you're not going to see this. You'll see it from the side uh, and I may put a black cap on this, but right now I'm not too worried about this piece. So it's a nylock nut, so go ahead and run that down until it touches and then you want to torque that. That's the brake pedal shaft lock nut and it's uh, 15 to 20 foot pounds. That's it. It doesn't take a whole lot on that one. So really all we have left to do from here on this bike is the uh, tappet covers, of course the push rods and push rod covers, and then the rocker box and the rocker box top. We are putting, like I said, we are putting the stock air cleaner back on here, but eventually this will be changed to a black air cleaner. So uh, stay tuned for future videos on that stuff. Uh, we've got some black uh, Vance and Hines headers going on and then of course the Rush Racing Big Louis uh, that I had pulled off of the Street Glide that'll be going back on to this bike that are now sear coated black. So when we took the motor apart we had to make sure that the cylinder that you're working on it's at top dead center on the compression stroke and we know it's top dead center because we haven't moved the bike but to check it you can always use a screwdriver you know we remove the spark plug up here. Make sure you put the bike in sixth gear so it's easy to turn the rear wheel. Start turning the rear wheel until your cylinder that you're working on comes all the way to the top and your rockers have no pressure on them. You should be able to reach in and move them. When you're putting it back together, maybe you've moved the bike or you're not quite sure it's in top dead center, you can always check it with the screwdriver again. Make sure that your cylinder's all the way to the top and your lifters on the other side should be flush with the case. So as you can see right there, the both of the lifters are flush with the case. So we know that's on the compression stroke and the cylinder is up. So that's top dead center on the compression stroke. And you'll have to do that on both cylinders. So we're, right now we're just gonna work on the rear head and get that assembled. And then we'll roll the tire and put the front cylinder on top dead center compression stroke and then we can go ahead you want to just make sure that you don't have any pressure on the top of that cylinder when you're taking it apart and putting it back together so you're going to get all new o-rings and you want to make sure when you pull your push rod tubes and stuff out you're going to see those yellow uh, o-rings in there you can reach in with this a little pick they're not going to fall out so you need to make sure that you get those out you want to replace those or one-time use once you pull this stuff apart just put new ones in let me get back there we can see the other one and then you've got several on your tubes and then of course you'll have uh, a couple down here on the lifters so on your gaskets you have these two things here called the ribs you want to make sure that when you put it on that it's covering the anti-roll pin so when he lays it up on there you can see 
those ribs are going to cover the anti-roll pin going across there. So that's the anti-roll pin and your ribs are actually covering it. So that's the correct way to install the gasket. And both of these are marked rear and front. There's an R inside this one so we know that's the one that we're working on. Of course blue Loctite on the bolts. Go ahead and put them in, get them started. There's really no torque sequence on this, but we do have torque specs. Once we get these hand tightened, we'll run them in until they touch, and then we'll torque them down with a torque wrench. And we're going to be torquing those down to 90 to 120 inch pounds. So right now, he's just driving them in until they touch, and then we'll go ahead and uh, torque them down. To make this really easy, pick up a set of these uh, Allen wrench. It's a socket with the Allen wrench on it, but with the ball head. If not, you're going to be fighting those inside ones back there, and it's going to take forever. So now we're getting ready to install our new O-rings. Of course, you're going to have two different sizes for the tubes. These actually set in the covers that we just put on. You've got the top ones that we picked out, we pushed out from the top, and then the smaller ones actually go on your tube. So there's the tube, and that's what this uh, O-ring, the small O-ring is going to go on here. And then we also have to deal with our push rods. There's actually two different sizes of push rods. You're going to have a long one and a short one. Your long one goes in the exhaust side. Your exhaust side is your back side on here where your exhaust comes out. And then, of course, the front is going to be your intake. So the long push rod goes in the back. Short one is your intake and the same thing on the other. The intake goes to the inside, your long one goes to the outside on your exhaust side. So he's got the O-ring pushed in that one. He's gonna go ahead and seat the other O-ring. So we're gonna grab our bottom push rod tube. We're gonna put our O-ring on there. Put it back down. Now you grab the inner, you put the cap on, slide the cap to the top. And you're gonna put the spring on. And you're gonna put a flat washer on. And you're going to put your O-ring on. And you're going to pick up your bottom push rod tube and you're going to slide this together. Just like this. And you're going to get your top O-ring that goes into your head. Put it on here. Take this and put this into your intake side. And the bottom. To the top. Stick the bottom of the push rod into the top of your lifter cap so basically from here once it's set in the bottom pull your inner tube up and you can see that o-ring right there that's going to seat up in there those are the ones that we pried out earlier you can see right there where that yellow o-ring is in there and where that tube is coming up through and that's how that wants to be set so to be able to see this a little bit better we went ahead and did the back one we're going to work on the uh, exhaust side and you basically have to push this down that spring this tube has to go up it has to remain up we already have it up in the o-ring seated but this has to push down with this clip and we're basically going to take a pry tool we're going to set the top put the pry tool under it push this down and let this snap on just like that so now you can see this clip is actually pushing up it's pushing the tube up and seating the o-ring in the top and it's also pushing this down which is seating the rest of our o-rings so you have all of that pressure on your push rod uh, tubes now so basically we're not going to show doing the front cylinder it's exactly the same way we're going to do the rear and then remember that when you do the front, you want to set it at the top dead center and you should be fine. So on the lower rocker box gaskets, you will notice, and I don't think you can see it in the video, but this says front head on here. And if you flip it over, it actually says rear head. So you want to make sure they're both exactly the same. So of course the rear head, we go on the rear head, but make sure this is facing up. And then you basically just turn it over. You've got the other one. You want to make sure that front head is facing up on the front head. So you're going to set the rocker box gasket first carefully squeeze that in you don't have as much room in the back as you do in the front because of your frame uh, so the back one that's why we're showing you this one basically we're going to repeat the same stuff over on the front head but it's a lot easier to do on the front than it is the rear because of the frame so you just want to make sure that you get it on there get everything lined up 
we'll get a couple of bolts started one on each side just to kind of make sure our gasket is set correctly as you can see that back one the top one that's really kind of difficult to get to but you can get it in there and get it started and then he'll start one on the other side just to make sure that everything is squared up and uh, our gasket is setting in there properly. So I'm gonna throw it up on the screen here, but this is straight from the service manual. Here's the torque sequences. And you're gonna wanna tighten these down to 120 to 168 inch pounds, but you need to make sure that you do it in that torque sequence. So you get ready to do this back one back here that's under here, you can't really get anything in there. So the service manual is telling us to get the snap-on dog bone torque adapter it's going to be part number FRDH161 or equivalent. So just to be clear, before we torque these down, a little bit of blue Loctite on every one of those bolts. So once we've got those torqued down, we're going to move to the inside of the rocker box and I'll try to get a better angle than this. Now we're getting ready to install the rocker arm support plate. Uh, once that's placed in, once again, blue Loctite on the parts. Here's the torque sequence. I'm going to put that up on screen for you so you can see the torque sequence on those and then you're going to want to torque those down to 18 to 22 foot pounds so from this side he's going to go ahead and drop the push rods in of course like we said the long one goes to the rear that's your exhaust cylinder and then the shorter one goes to the front or middle when you do the front it's going to be just the same the short one goes in the middle the longest one will go towards the very front now from there you want to take your o-ring a new o-ring and set down in here this is going to go underneath the rocker arm support plate once you get that in you can lay the rocker arm support plate in now on this one you want to leave the rear two bolts in because once you get that plate set in there, there's no way to get those bolts in there. So you just kind of have to take your time, leave the bolts in the uh, rocker arm support plate, just kind of pull up on them, jimmy this thing around, and you'll get it in there to where it'll set in. So just a couple of little tips for you guys when you're putting the uh, rocker arm assembly back in. Remember when you had this set at top dead center on the compression stroke so there's no uh, pressure pushing up on this. When you're putting these bolts back in, you'll notice a gap around the bottom uh, when you're setting this in and torquing this down. What that gap is, is pressure built up in your lifters. So you want to snug this down, let it set 15, 20 minutes, come back and snug it. You want to be have this all the way down metal to metal inside here, but you still want to be able to move these. If you can't move these, then you've got pressure built up in there. So just torque them down a little bit, walk away, come back, and just keep doing quarter turns until all the pressure is bled off those lifters. So you can see on this rocker arm assembly back here, the two bolts in the middle, that's for the breather. So before you put this assembly in, like right here, this is what you're gonna see, this hole and this hole in the middle. You're gonna to wanna to blow these out or you're gonna have oil in there. When you put the bolts in and you run them down the torque spec, you're gonna be compressing oil. You can't compress oil, so you wanna make sure this is blowed out. If you don't blow these out and you compress that down, your, your motor and you are gonna have a really bad day. So just before you put these two bolts in, get something and blow these out. And that was full of oil. So we got the lifters bled off and we've got play up here. Again, you can always just grab these and move them. If you can move those, then you don't have any pressure on there. So now we're gonna go ahead and torque them down. To And to finalize this, you have a breather assembly bolt in the back and one on the front side right there. Those are 120 to 156 inch pounds. You want to torque those down. And so now you set the gasket for the rocker cover. Make sure that you pay attention to the way the rocker cover goes on uh, and the gasket. It'll only go on one way. You want to set your rocker cover on. 
once again blue loctite on your bolts run them in until they're just uh, touching and then we'll torque them down and remember what we talked about in the beginning of the video about putting your bolts in the cardboard when you flip that cardboard over you can see the different links and the bolts so you can mark it and make sure that you put the same bolts back in the same holes you're going to have long bolts and short bolts For the rocker covers, you're going to torque these in this pattern. And you're going to torque those down to 15 to 18 foot-pounds. But don't forget, when you get ready to do that front, you're going to have to roll that front cylinder in the top dead center of the compression stroke. And when you put the rocker arm assembly on, don't forget that you may have to let those lifters bleed down. You can do a little bit at a time. Once it's bled down, you'll be able to, you'll be able to move those uh, rocker arms. They'll be slightly loose in there, and then you know you can go ahead and torque everything down to spec. So pretty much the same thing on the front. It's just a lot easier on the front because you have more room. So we're going to be putting the stock breather back on. Uh, watch for a future video on this because this is going to be getting changed. But for you guys that have the stock breathers out there, uh, the, uh, taking it off and putting it back on is really easy. But basically, this is your backing plate to your breather. You're going to put that on. Before I put this bolt in, both of these bolts have a breather hole here. This has got like a little uh, small nipple on it because the back of the breather element has these rubber plugs. So when you push this into the hole, these are actually going to go clamp onto that. And uh, this is a hollow bolt. And this goes into the breather assembly in here. If you remember before we did the rocker arm assembly before we put the gasket on here there was a channel that ran through that recovered with the gasket that leads over to this hole which leads right through here so you get your blowback uh, from the oil that's the oil that you guys are seeing dripping out onto your motors when it gets really hot or you've got too much oil in your motor it's actually going to blow back through these two holes through the breather assembly depending on what kind of air cleaner you have on there this could start dripping out and dripping onto your motor so you guys that uh, were always wondering what that oil was and that's what it is that's just how they're set up these get torqued down to 22 to 24 foot pounds got three bolts on here that line up right here and then these tubes get pushed into here so we just line these up a little blue loctite on each one of these as well And I just tighten those down, don't really have torque specs on those. When you get done, you want to make sure that you press these back onto those nipples and that breather tube that I just showed you. So now all you have left is the outer cover. Just make sure that your rubber's all the way on, all the way around and seated correctly on the back side of the cover. That's done. Thing left I have to do now that I got the fluids in is get the derby cover on so I'll show you guys the uh, torque sequence and the uh, torque specs on that So that's pretty much it guys uh taking a couple of days to get all these parts on and get all these different angles and make sure we've got the right torque specs and you guys can see what's going on as far as all of the bolts and stuff you do have options out there you can buy complete black bolt kits they're very expensive uh for this build we're not doing that they're for 
five, six hundred dollars for those bolt kits. Uh, so we're just going to cap these. Uh, we'll actually do a video. Uh, one of our videos coming up is going to be dealing with some different covers and stuff like that. And that will be included in that video. Guys, most of the ones that you find on the market are plastic. Uh, if you spend $15 on 75 bolt caps and you think they're metal, mm, the metal ones are very expensive, upwards of a couple hundred dollars. So um, just know that if you're spending 15 bucks on 75 pieces of chrome or black, they're going to be plastic. Uh, the cool thing about the plastic is you may be disappointed when you get them and they're plastic, but you have to remember if you ever have to service or do anything on your bike and you've got caps on there, when you pull those off, you're going to damage them. I promise you. You can spend as much time as you want, but you're going to damage some of those caps. Big deal, 15 bucks for 75 of them, throw them in the trash can. Get some new ones and put them on there. You cover all your bolts back up, so it's really not that big of a deal. So anything that you see bolt-wise on this will more than likely end up with some kind of cap on it. Doing this on my own without shooting a video, I probably could have had the bike put back together in a day and a half. Um, this ended up taking three days to shoot this video. If there's parts on here, maybe that's on your bike uh, that you want powder coated, remember, get a service manual guys all of this information that i gave you today is in a service manual you saw throughout the video when i was throwing up pictures of torque sequences and torque specs that's all in your service manual so i'm going to get out of here guys this is like like i said day three of shooting i'm really tired and i hope this video helped you if it did please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe man this was a pretty long tiresome video to make and i still have to go in and do all the editing and edit out all the cuss words and tools flying i'm just kidding we didn't really throw any tools this time but said a few cuss words so we need to make sure we edit that stuff out uh so you guys can have a good video to watch now i'm gonna get out of here and go set my butt on the couch because i'm tired Till the next video, as always, be safe, keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the YouTube video, guys. If you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button over here. Over 100 bagger related videos on our YouTube channel. But to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. Just one of them. Not really going to say anything else. Just, just click the button, man. It'll just.